Well, you're welcome to the Project Boxing podcast with myself, Don McGuinness. And as you can see, as ever, Anthony Million Dollar Crawler. The second most impressive crawler this week. Um, well, possibly, actually. I, I don't know about other members of your family. might be more impressive than you this week. And I'm not just talking about your younger brother either. Um, but there you go, Anthony. It's a few days in now, but I suppose we'll, we'll have to start with your William because the dust has settled. Yeah. He, he was enjoying himself last time I saw him on Saturday night, as well he should, because it was a, a stunning yeah. performance. It probably, you know, wasn't what you would have ideally have wanted in a way, because you probably want him a little, to have a, just a little bit more of a feel around, a bit more action. But to do the job in 44 seconds, you can't argue with that, can you? Oh, no, of course. Listen, I was, I was sort of made up with him. I, well, I was made up with him. Uh, he was very ruthless. It was a great shot, shot we've been working on. Um in, in the fight where it was, you know, it was a little step up. So it was, it was a little statement made, do you know what I mean? But it's, um, it is and it comes and I sound, um, it's not a sound negative or something, but obviously now we're going to get some round. we need to get some rounds, but it was straight back in the gym doing so much of his learning there. But no, um, a good night for the family. Um, you know, obviously William doing that and, you know, that, that new arena as well, I always say it, that in the Manchester arena will always have a special place in my heart, but, that um, the co-op arena is unbelievably impressive, isn't it? I think it was a big hit, wasn't it? Uh, the way it was, yeah. it was kind of around eight thousand in there. It, it looked a business, didn't it? I mean, yeah, the way no, it kind it of, did. obviously you can fit twenty three and a half thousand in there, but yeah, the eight thousand in there looked, looked and well, felt good. It? it did. It still looked well, and um, I think there'll be some huge nights of British boxing in that arena. I really do. Um, but yeah, no, obviously, I know it was a. Uh, it was a nice first night to christen it with the main event. Obviously, there was the disappointment of the chief support falling throughout the final hour. Um, but yeah, no, all in all, Dom, good night, and yeah, uh, well, they made a bit of made a bit of noise. Yeah, I believe it is a kidney infection that Mike Mikey yeah. Gomez Jr. has got now. I mean, that was a shocker, wasn't it? It was a shocker uh, on the night. It's yeah, horrendous yeah. for both lads. I mean, obviously, Reese Bellotti, quite you know, understandably had a lot to say. And from Mikey's oh, yeah. point of view as well, I mean, nobody wants that, do they? You know what I mean? So close to Christmas as well, a payday for no, the lad. No, it's... I, I, uh, and listen, I feel for them both. And I feel for Reese. Like, Reese is a lovely lad, by the way. So yeah. I think, you know, his iron emotions. And listen, his point about, like, listen, you know, you get the doctor in or whatever. What what do you expect? Like, And I get that. Um, but I did see Mikey on the way out. And don't you know what? First, when you start the rumours, you hear the rumours. I thought it was Reese. He wasn't well, he failed the doctor. So mm. I saw Mikey come out and, and he looked at me and said, you all right, mate? And then he said, he, you know what? He said, I just feel so bad on everyone. And then it clicked. It was Mikey mm. who, had the, um, who wasn't well. And then when I looked at him, he, he, he did look, he looked broken. He genuinely did look broken. Mm. And, like, you know, the lug and stuff. And um, he, he, he felt, he just, he looked weak. He looked really, really weak and um, like he was ill. And obviously, it's come out since that he was. And um, obviously, people was asking. I was even speaking with Jimmy Mack Jr. the next morning. And he was going, he was like saying, I was just like, he's mad. And he said, no, oh, you know, you've knew Mikey a long time. I said, they have. He um, mm -hmm. had his first fight to 10. How much your fights my old? How much your club? And one thing I'll say about him, he's, he's crazy and all this, but he's certainly not a spewer. Do you know what I mean? And... I think where Mikey's from as well, he lost the career best payday. He sold a load of tickets. Um, it was just a shame. And like you say, a massive shame for Reese as well. Like you mentioned then, people don't realise so. Neither got paid. Does, do you know what I mean? Does, if, if Reese can't get out before Christmas, mate, that's, that's his mm. Christmas. I think he's got a lot of fun. It's just, it's just mental, mate. It is. It's just mad and it can only happen in boxing. Yeah. Uh, first of all, listen, I hope Mikey's on the men. That's probably the most important thing. But, yeah. um, oh, mate. Hopefully, we get to see it at some point as well. What's that? Hopefully, we do get to see it. We do. I hope we do. And I uh, I was sat, I was, well, I was working, it wasn't with um, Steve Bunch and Ronald McIntosh. I was literally molesting the ring. Um, and I was, I was looking forward so much to that fight. Um, so, obviously, we just done Jimmy Flynn, Campbell Latin. And obviously the main event, Jack Catro reaches progress. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what did you now that you've you've had time to think about it? I mean, obviously we saw Campbell afterwards in the hotel and everything, and yeah, you know, he put a brave face on it, wasn't he? But 
again, it, you know, he's dropped he's dropped the decision to Jimmy. It's yeah. a massive blow for him. Uh, he's, I mean, people writing him off now and everything else. He's got to deal yeah. with all that. He's had to deal with all the stuff since day one, anyway, hasn't he? I mean, what do you, what do you think is best yeah. for Campbell? Do you know what though, right? I thought in the first four to five rounds, I thought he'd really shown improvement. He looked strong in there, but defensively, I was really impressed with him. Mm. And uh, Dagu was up after that first half of the fight, and then Jimmy Joe. Flint had a really good second half of the fight and, and won most of the rounds uh, from the halfway point, in my opinion. It was a 10 rounder. And there weren't loads in it. Campbell was still having success, but he he, um, he went back to showing, you know, a few of the mistakes that he makes. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that, that lad's, honestly, with his, uh, the heart he's got. He's such yeah. a tough lad. And I do believe there is there's so much improvement in him. And I think we've seen improvement, uh, certainly for the first four rounds. And I do think that'll come. I think it's just so highlighted because it's Campbell, because it's Ricky's son, and I feel for him massively like that. And I, obviously, I was really rooting for him. And listen, fair play to Jimmy Joe. And you know what he did do, actually, in the second half of the fight? He hit the body and hit the body well. Mm. Um, I think that had a big big effect. But it was a top yeah. fight. It was a top fight. There wasn't much in it. Um, and it was, do you know what I mean? It was, um, I was glad they both got the stage that they deserved. Do you know in that I say it all the time? We were saying it on a Saturday night. It's nice to see a central area title like do you know like that getting the the, uh, the stage that that deserved. But I think Campbell, listen, you know, he's he's lost to the same guy twice. He's he's a young lad. There's so much improvement in him. He's he's not finished. He's absolutely not finished. What Campbell wants to do now? No, obviously, I mean, like you know, where do we go? Do we have to reassess things? Possibly. Just Campbell having a few fights on the small hall, working on his craft, does that help? Yeah, I think it would. I think that would. But I still believe, like you say, there's so much improvement in Campbell. And um, you, you, I think we'll certainly see him come back and, and win a title. Mm. There was good wins for Janae Bostan, Pat McCormick in action as well. And then yeah. and obviously the, the main event, it didn't disappoint. It was a cracker, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was at the first four or five. It was very cagey. You want that? I think you yeah. really caught fire. Which honestly, I think you know, my prediction. I don't get many things right, Don. But I was like, I think it's going to be really cagey for the first four or five or so. Then I think Jack will pull away in the second half. The final so he doesn't, and it, it'll hurt progress once or twice along the way. And, and I think that was exactly what happened. But it was. Uh, I think what it what woke him up. I don't say woke him up. What probably caused him to uh, adjust, and I thought he adjusted very well, was the knockdown. And listen, John Lee, for me, you had to score the knockdown, even though it was like off balance, um, caught him where it did. It, it landed and he went over, so he, he had to score the knockdown, um, even though Jack wasn't in any way hurt or anything like that. But no, I thought, mm. I thought Jack adjusted really well. Credit to him, credit to his whole team. Uh, he's very heavy handed, Jack. I always say that. Anyone who know I know people who spied him, they all say how heavy handed he is as well. He's got very good timing. He does mm. he does a lot of the simple things really good, Jack. And I think that's what makes him so hard to beat. And I think now, like, he's just really hope we see him get the world title shot he deserves. I don't think anyone would be good him of that. Mm. Well, I think that that's definitely gonna happen, isn't it? Early next year or whatever. So yeah. It, is it still a case though with Jack Catchall? It's crazy when you think that he's been in with Josh Taylor twice. Arguably, you know, obviously the first one didn't go his way, but most yeah. people think he, he won that reasonably handily. The second one, he did get the nod, didn't yeah. get the belts, which was a massive disappointment to him first time around. Now he's done that against Prograde, and yet he's still, I think, you know, he's underrated, isn't he? Because he, he's, yeah. he could still he could still walk the streets apart from you know proper boxing fans, and, yeah. and people wouldn't wouldn't know him. He's it, it, yeah. still he's still waiting, I suppose. That was a breakthrough moment for him, no doubt about it. In, yeah. in, in so many ways, but he just he just doesn't get the praise he deserves even now. No, he's he's very underrated, Jack. And uh, you know what it is? I think he's just a nice lad. He don't make yeah. too much noise or anything like that. Like that's why I was glad when we've seen him. He's active on social media after it when he has been since and apart. No, I was glad then. I saw him and Devin Haney talking and stuff like that, Lopez and whatnot like that. But no, he, he deserves one of those world title fights. And I was saying this. I think he'd probably start favourite 
in most of those world title fights other than Tiafimo Lopez. I don't know about Hayne because I don't know what's going on with the interim and all that. Mm. I forgot who it was now who's got who, who or I don't know, is he champion in recess or whatever, but would he start favourite against Liam Parrow? Possibly. Mm. Uh, lad who's just the WBA um, against Isaac Pitbull Cruz in a, a big upset on the Robert Garcia's lad. Would he, he'd, he'd probably start favourite against most super lightweights in the world, like bar very few. So, yeah, no, it's, but it's just who who's going to be in it, who's going to be queuing up to think, right, I'll give, I'll give Jack Catchell a voluntary defence. Nah, um, that ain't happening. It's going to be many. Um, so we'll see. But I think obviously if Liam Parrell wins, um, over he's him, him or Hitchens win. I think they're both a match room, isn't he? So I think that's what we'll see. I know uh, Jack's going over to Puerto Rico, I think it is, to uh, to watch it ringside. So I think that's what we'll see. We'll see that uh, the two, the winner of that fight, Jack will fight the winner of that for the title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, what else was there? Anything else from the Manchester card that caught your eye? I'm trying to think now what um, winner. You mentioned Pat was on it. Um, I've just gone through the card. Emily Whitworth had a very good yeah. debut. She looked well. She opened the show. First, um, yeah, first fighter to fight. Joe McGrail, Steve Clark. Yep, Steve Clark. He got a good six rounds in the learning fight. Uh, Joe McGrail. Yeah, I think that I think that was uh, the full card, to be honest. Obviously, yeah. it wasn't the biggest card, but um, no, yeah, that was it. Do you know what someone was saying last night? I don't know who it was. Dumb. If there's any listeners who can find out, really appreciate who was the first ever boxer to fight at the... Obviously, I know Emily Whitworth was at the co-op. Steve Bunce was saying this. And he had the answer. Who was the first fighter to fight at the Manchester Arena, now the AO Arena? Back then, I thought it was the 9X, but it might not have been. The very first name. I wonder who the first fighter was. It would have been some prospect, wouldn't it? So you don't know? I don't know. Do you know? No. So you should should have... um... It's a good question. It's a great question. I'd love to know. I'd love to know. So who would have been one of the early early big names at the Manchester well, Arena? Say, what is it, 25 years old? It's how old it is. It was obviously the... Obviously, it was before Naz, wasn't it? And I imagine at that time, to go to the arena, would it just be... You would think it probably would have just been Frank Warren going to the arena at that time, wouldn't you? Mm. Right, we'll have to find well, that out. Someone, someone yeah, might, might see this. Somebody might watch it, like and then, then... I mean, I might be totally wrong. Um, Matt Shrew might have gone there, but I have a feeling it was probably, um, you know, probably by Frank Warren. It might have been Sports Network back then. Um, yeah, uh, it might have been before. Uh, but anyway, I want but if to you think about it, Ricky was in his Tyson... pomp at the arena. Ricky was in his pomp in two thousand five. That's no, nearly like, twenty years way ago. Before I, way before two thousand five. When it, I remember got watching Nas at the arena. Yeah. Um, so and it was before that. M- Nigel Ben. Yeah. He fought they fight Steve Collins at the arena. Where did Barry McGuigan and Jim McDonald box? The G Mex. Right. Now yeah. Manchester Central. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what? That's a question that I want to tweet that out. Who who was the right. first ever fighter to fight at the, the Manchester Arena? Or the first yeah. two fighters. There you go. Right, we'll find out. Anthony, that's a very good question. Yeah. Right, so enough of that. Go. This week's episode is sponsored by the letter K, Anthony. Yeah. That's where we are. That's where we're up to in the alphabet now. So, again, when you think of K, special K, Kel Brook. Yeah, I was just going to say Kel Brook. Yeah, uh, but K for knockout. And, uh, again, you know, a special mention to William Crawler uh, for... <laughs> A very, very good knockout. A very good finish at the weekend. Yeah. Um, firstly, actually, what what was your your own personal? I think we've we've kind of touched on this before. You, yeah. Your your favourite knockout for yourself? Do you know what? Um, might have been. Didn't have loads, did I? But it might have been winning the British title. I'd be a John Watson. John Watson, yeah. And the shot we was working on that as that shot, and you hear Joe call for the shot just before I delivered it. So yeah, it was a it was a pretty big knockout, yeah, against a good lad and winning winning the most beautiful belt in boxing. So I'd probably say that was probably my favourite one. 
And that's when you just stepped up for, to take the opportunity from Super yeah, Feather from to Lightweight, Lewis, didn't you? Yeah, from Super Feather to Lightweight and won the British title. And never looked back? Never looked back, never come back there down. There you go. Well, what about other knockouts then that, okay. that spring to mind? I mean, you, you know, there's, there's, there's classic ones like for all the wrong reasons for, for Harold Graham, but obviously the Julian Jackson yeah, one. Yeah, uh, well, that's one, isn't it? When he was yeah. a minute away from winning a world title. Do you know what? So, you know, one that always sticks out to me, and I always drill it with uh, not just the amateurs, with, with my fighters. When someone's left hooking with a left hooker, with their non punching hand uh, low. Yeah. And it always go back to this, and it, it's one of the most sickening knockouts I've seen. And, and he was on top at the time. I'm sure I've said something on this before. Takalu Wayne Alexander. Yeah. Oh, it was the most brutal, like. Nearly beheaded. It was in your call. I remember mm. watching it live. That that was a brutal, brutal knockout. Um, Tackle was a very good fighter, and, and I think Wayne. I don't even know if he did play possum like the body shot, like he did, and then Tackle come in for it, and he left up to him, didn't he? And the non punching arm wasn't there, and oh, it was, it was a big knockout. So that one, um, that was. Oh, there's there's a few in there. There's there's a. Uh, there's so many big ones, isn't there? Do you yeah, I mean, you, you, look at all through. Obviously, that the Lennox Lewis, both Lennox Lewis ones. Do you know what? We're talking about this the other night. We was in the car on the way to the ceremonial way and with Paul Stevenson. Um, the two, both of them scored the knockout. The Hassim Ratman, yeah. Lennox Lewis one, the first one. He was in the middle of the night in South Africa, wasn't it? Yeah. I remember watching yeah. that. I remember my uncle phoning, going, wow, did you see it? And, but then the return was a the the rematch. Lennox's was a belter as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, that the the Rackman one was when he'd been he'd been distracted to By to say the least. He'd Ocean. been filming Ocean's Eleven or something, hadn't he, in America? Well, boss, it was one of them, wasn't it? No, he was. Yeah. Uh, didn't didn't train the way he should do by all accounts, and uh, yeah. as in Rackman was in the shape of his life and. Pulled away, didn't he, with that lead hand low right hand boom over the top. That was a signal. Yeah, have you seen the uh, the Four Kings? By the way, that that's currently I think it's on Amazon Prime. You know, the the it go. It's basically Ben Eubank and Bruno Lewis. That's the the focus of. I've never seen that one. I, I will be watching it though. But I yeah, will you find them? There's one. like four episodes, and it's yeah. looking at obviously the two rivalries um, with you know Ben Eubank and everything else. But you know stuff you might not have seen before. Some little bits and pieces, and yeah. I I didn't. I mean, it's a long, long time ago, obviously, but. It's the uh, the really interesting thing is is Bruno Lewis. I think I didn't realize that. You know, I remember that I remember Lewis and the Uncle Tom comment. Um, but yeah. just how just how hurt Bruno was by that. Oh, that's I didn't. Really I'll have to watch this back. Cause obviously, I was only very young, but no, I'll have to watch that back. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I I didn't appreciate that at the time. That just how yeah. stunned Bruno was by the whole thing to the point yeah. that they, they meet up now. This you know, like Bruno, his body language is funny because. Yeah, still not comfortable with Lewis. It, it was weird. Over it all. Well, I'll, yeah. have to, I'll watch that. I'll watch that. But don't mind you. Do you know one of the ones actually I've just been thinking going back to knockouts? The body shot, Ricky Atman um, Castillo. Yeah. Where he turns away, grimaces in pain. Yeah. And Naz, Naz had some massive knockouts. Do you remember him and Kevin Keller? Yeah. Yeah. Him, Kevin Steve Keller. Robinson as well, obviously in Cardiff. Steve Robinson. I remember watching that. I mean, and Granddad, he didn't, he didn't put a foot wrong that night, did he? No, no, no. No, no as, but, uh, as had some big ones. I remember, I, I, do you know what? I used to love watching, do you know what, like his fights? I remember his first, Piani Bungu, I think that was his first defence. It was over about 30 seconds. Mm. Uh, yeah, Naz, Naz had some massive knockouts, didn't it? Yeah, well, and, and by the way, uh, just last week, you were playing paddle with uh, one of the, the Naz boys, one of the yeah, Hamid lads. Yeah, what a nice Adam. lad, by the way. What a nice lad. Well, you know yeah, and the Sammy as well, obviously, the... Yeah. the the two, no, two top lads, lads, aren't they? Really good lads. Good lads. I'll tell you what Adam was. He was a very good paddle player. Well, paddle it, it was, it was very, good. very annoying to watch. He was he was like a professional, wasn't he? Nah, he was really good. He was really good. But do you know when he, in his debut, I, I worked it and I said it, he, uh, he was so much better technically than what I thought. Um, yeah. I mean that in the greatest. No comment, because obviously he didn't have a big, long amateur career. I thought, I thought he'd done well. Uh, yeah, but like you know, he's an athlete, isn't he? You know, I mean, you're watching him on the paddle court. He was a good tennis player. You can see that. Yeah, he, no, he's just a—he's very—he's—he's he's a real, really good athlete. 
No, he is. He is. He's a good all rounder, isn't he? He's, uh, no, he ticks a lot of boxes, has not he? No, good lad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so will that about do it then for your knockouts? You can't think of anything else? Um, well, you know, here all day with knockouts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, recent ones. Any that just. There's been a couple of horrible ones, actually, hasn't there? Very recently. I, yeah, recent time. Shay uh, Opataya against yeah. Ali Sorrow was a bad one, wasn't it? Um, yeah. You know what? I yeah. saw these bad actually as well. Recently, I thought I read that. I thought I've done a lot of good for Zorro as well. Yeah. I've like, done a lot of good. Um, uh, so we've got to give a credible mention as well to our own Dan Morley as well for that body shot. For, Dan, against... Dan's was a peach of a body shot. Kind of mean yes. well as well. That was, that was Dan, a, that was Dan, a yeah, no, that was an absolute peach of a body shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whatever. But yeah, no, I think I want to end up watching all the knockouts now tonight. Yeah. That's all okay. I had some big ones, didn't I? But yeah. 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 Right, well, we'll move swiftly on because we'll be here all day, as you say. Right. In a couple of days' time, it's Belfast, Anthony. You always love going to Belfast. You've got Robbie Davis Jr. in action I against do. Javier Fortuna. Um, again, it's a big, uh, you know, it's a big card in Belfast as well. They, they they stack up the fights, and it's going to be a big, big night of action. And everyone turns out in Belfast, don't they? I mean, it's just it's, it is top it's to go there. It's just a proper fight city, isn't it? It's one of my favourite cities, you know, Belfast. Yeah. It really is one of my favourite cities in the world. Um, it's a top fight card as well. Some good fights. Paddy McCrory's on. Um, Robbie's on, obviously, with Kurt Walker. Uh, they're all in decent fights as well, which a lot of the pro box fights are. And there's some good Irish prospects. So, yeah, no, I, um, obviously, Robbie's he's in a real fight with Javier Fortuna. Uh, it's a yeah. tough one. But, uh, no, he's, he's, he's trained well, looks well. I'm looking forward to it. Um, obviously, that I won't be enjoying the sights of Belfast too much because Friday night after the fight, listen, I think, they rude not to have um, a black milkshake or two, as they say, but I know I'm going to be on a flight around 6.30 uh, to go straight to Birmingham, where I've got Owen on, Owen Lavin, um, yeah. standing up all round up on the very good um, card, certainly main event anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. Davis well, himself, we'll, get, huge. we'll have a look at that card in a minute, but just on the Belfast one, because obviously you've got, as, as you've been mentioning then, Robbie Davis, against Javier Fortuna, I mean, without yeah. giving game plans away, obviously, all that business. What happens in that? What What were you expecting well, and what, what, were you, what have you been working on with Robbie? No, well, listen, obviously, there's no, no denying Robbie's the bigger man, but I can't rely on that with some of the skill set of Javier Fortuna. He's sharp. Certainly got to respect that, and he keeps saying, you know, you've got to respect, although he's, um, although he's much shorter than the power, that um, because it'll be nice and sharp, those small gloves, do you know what I mean? He's he's a good fighter for two, and he's a very good fighter. Um, but you know, Robbie's. I think obviously you can't really give too much away. But Robbie's Robbie's certainly got to be, you know, making him making him. But he's got to be very smart at the same time and can't offer him silly shots. And he's I think he's got to make his strength strength tell. But also as well, it's not just a simple matter of him walking in. He's got also got to make for two and fall short as well at times. Um, are you hoping for an early night in that one? Or are you fully prepared for always a distant open, fight? I always open for an early night. Damn, mm -hmm. I don't think it will be an early night. I think it'll be um, it'll be a tough hard fight. But um, listen, it's one as well that I do believe he can win. Uh, on the on the card of that one, Kurt Walker, who's obviously a standout amateur Olympian, yeah, in against fight Kurt he's uh, he's a real talent, Kurt, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, no, he is, and I fancy him to look good again on Friday night. Um, good lad, then. Very well schooled and and they'll move Kurt. Well, he's been matched well anyway, hasn't he? But they'll move Kurt pretty fast. And I think after this, they'll be, they'll be looking for him to like you know start bursting. Honestly, not bursting on the scene. That's a that's the wrong thing to do. But certainly start looking at titles. Yeah, yeah. But you, I think you know one one thing that people are trying to see will will the power come with him. You know, in terms of the, yeah. that knockout power. I mean, would you expect this one to go points as well? Garcia comes with a good record. No record, yeah, I think unless Kurt gets in late on, he had a favour points. But no, I do like Walker. He's, a, yeah. he's got lovely skills. Yeah, and Pony McCrory's had big fights against Carrillo again. I think that's one for the home crowd, hopefully for, for yeah. their sake and for, for McCrory's sake to get a good win and, and see where he can get to again. Of course, there are no common boxing but I hope for him. And honestly, Dom, I remember seeing him at Cheltenham or talking to him. And he gave a really good account of himself against like a Belanga, but he yeah. was still absolutely devastated. And um, you know, talking to him, good lad, buddy, and 
it was just he was still sick sickened you know what I mean and uh, it just mm. just the power that Belanga carries it just it just switched off one second and there it was but um, no I'd, I'd like to say I expect McCrory to to win uh, Friday night and then you know make his number assault on um, getting another world title shot yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, um, yeah, Tommy Mack is uh, in action. There's right. um, Ruben Farrell, Gareth Dowling as well. So, again, showcasing yeah, some top, top talent. Very, very handed. Yeah, Tommy Mack. Him and um, Tyrone McKenna, actually, they've got a good podcast. I've only heard a little bit of it, but it's uh, the funny guys. Two shy retiring lads, aren't they? Yeah, no, no, they, uh, they do. They make me laugh. <laughs> right, as you say, you're going to be in Birmingham then. So, it's uh, yeah, no time for you to get... Get daft in Belfast, which you would like to do, given half a chance. Uh, half a chance, I will. But if I get daft in Belfast, then it'll be straight to the airport, which wouldn't yeah. be very professional when I've got Owen on uh, Saturday. Yeah, so Owen's in against um, a, a decent Frenchman, Remy Schola, yeah. who can it can produce a shock as well. And it's only his third pro fight, Owen Lavin, isn't it? It is. And um, even like his last opponent, listen, the, the, the fights that he expects him to win, but his last opponent with a few prospects, he'd, Draw top round off, he looked very good. And even with this one, if you keep with Jack Oliphant on Owen Lavin's debut, he, he, he put him out cold, he yeah. did. So it is, it's another little test, you know. But I think these at these tests, I think he'll come with ambition. I, I like it when the opponents come throwing shots because then it allows it allows the prospect to then get the shots off that little easier. And it, it tests them as well. I say it all the time. I think it's better for everyone all around. I think it's better for the prospect. I think it's better for the TV, for the promoter, mm. he finds out whether his, his prospects, what he's made of a little bit earlier. Um, yeah. And it's, it's better for the paying crowd. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see what happens with Owen. He's ready. He's, he's looking good though, isn't he? He's looking yes, good he does, in the gym. He looks really well, Owen. He's a good yeah. lad. He's, uh, he's, he's one of the characters in the gym. He's settling in Manchester uh, finally. But no, he's funny and he's a good lad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Echo Wasserman, Ben Vaughan. Echo's um, the engine. top servant, as they say, and all that kind of cliche, um, but he just is, isn't he? He's a really good pro, Echo. Uh, yes, he is just a no, good, honest pro. Uh, not, not doing him you know, wrong there, actually. He's, uh, he's won a British Lonsdale belt yeah. outright. He's an um, unbelievable engine on him, and it's the nickname. The last fight with Owen Kirk, not Owen Kirk, Owen Cooper. Owen Cooper, what a fight. Unbelievable. Do you remember? He, he, he yeah. got smart, didn't he? That's right. I like Echo a lot, and um, I think the team, Barrett and Jimmy Gill, you know, just boxing people, boxing people, and uh, but yeah, Ben Vaughan's very heavy-handed, and um, we'll see, we'll see. But I think I won't be surprised if that. I don't want to say fight of the night because it's the main event. I can't wait for Chantel's on as well and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the highlights well, of the night. So what you know about? Um... Chantel, Patricia Burkle, she's been around a bit. She's got some good yes. wins. She was picked by um, Natasha Jonas, your, Natasha, your old mate. Yeah, I were that night. She boxed well. Natasha Jonas, she's a good fighter. But I think, um, I think Chantel, like you say, I think she's she's one of the be very best fighters in women's boxing. Yeah, I do. You know, pound for pound, I think it's hard to argue with that when you look at the Katie Taylor fights. Obviously, Rihanna's done a lot with her. So, what happens in that? Do you, do you expect Ch uh, Chantel to come through? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I expect Chantel to come through, and uh, I think probably points, but I won't be surprised by late stoppage either. She's um, there's some who's on my engines before, some engine on Chantel, very strong. Yeah, and what about the main event then? Because it is a cracker, isn't uh, it? I mean, it's, uh... that is a pick. Um, I think, listen, I think if you're forced to pick a winner, I think I think you make Liam Davis um, a slight favourite. Uh, absolutely huge at the way, but that's always a worry. Does it catch up? As she has got that perfect style um, to make it, you know, to make it difficult for Liam Davis. But I've been super impressed as well at the same time with Liam Davis. So being honest, um, all the way through, from right from the night, he beat um, Salford's Mark Leach, beat him in a close one, and he's just how he's gone from strength to strength to strength. Um, has been impressive. I've been lucky enough to work a few of his fights and um, he's impressed me each and every time. So I do make him a favourite on points. It's just a real pick him. Both lads are super confident and what you wouldn't be surprised if Shabazz uh, nicked it as well on points. You know what I mean? Trying to figure him out. Sharp. I thought 
He boxed, I think it was Liverpool. Ah, I can't think where it was. I think it was a South American. They fought me here, William, on the same bill. And I'm on Catra and Aris. And um, he was a good opponent. Didn't get, he got a little bit of stick because people thought he might not have shined, but he, he was a good opponent. He fought very good. Mm. Um, good fighter, very good amateur. Um, I just think, I think it's a brilliant fight. And I mean, I don't know what the script is. And if it was with Matthew, I don't remember if he still is, but... If I think it's it Quincy Matthew, that... isn't it? What? I isn't it Quincy Matthew? Quincy Matthew, I think so. So this is one of the great things about certain scenic Riyadh season about a bit back. We never would have seen that fight. Yeah. Um, so if that's the case, uh, I'm not sure, definitely. But if that is the case, then brilliant. Fair play mm. to it. But fair play, both lads. And I want to say what else I believe as well. I think the winner is a great chance to get a world title shot. Did you actually give your prediction though? What? I, I, you actually... I said, I did actually say um, Davis points, you know, gone to where, but that is a tough one. It's one I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch that one because I wouldn't be surprised if I see it if it went the other way. Right. Okay. Right. Well, that wraps that one up then, Anthony. So before you go, um, yeah. Because yeah, I know there's a lot on. There's been, you know, some some news a few days ago that uh, it would be remiss of us to not, to not mention Eric Ten Hag. Yeah, who, poor who, Eric. Who, who has gone now? It's in a new era for Manchester United now. I, I mean, yeah. I was bowled over to learn that the fellow that was brought in at the start of the season, <laughs> who's managed big teams, is now the interim manager of Ruud van Nistelrooy. But Ruud, really? uh, he would yeah. have predicted that. He would have predicted that. Yeah, it's um, but yeah, I think Eric oh, he had to go, didn't he? But do you know what I think is bad? And I think it's an absolute disgrace. What the, the final show for him was down to Mike Oliver that decision on Sunday, and it's not even being bitter. That penalty was absolutely pathetic. Do you know the VAR? Yeah, well, against it, West Ham, I'm not saying the game should have been one at half time, so not that, but that penalty that was, I think. Listen, if he would have beat West Ham, I don't think they would have got rid of Ten Hag. Like really, the day later. I, I, I think I think he was good anyway. Oh no, I do, I do. He was coming, he was coming, but I don't think he would have beat West Ham, and then he would have said, "Right, you're going." No, but it's the it's the next one, the the next big defeat, oh, no, the next no, one that's the big thing. It's always going to happen. It's yeah. always going to happen. But that that decision for that penalty, I know it's a boxing podcast, but. Oh, mate, I, I thought it was disgusting. I did, I just thought it was terrible. And the referee, like, I, I think I tweeted the game's gone. And, you know, my highly respected opinion on football done probably means absolutely very little to a lot of people. Well, but yeah, it was it's comical. Like, but to be honest, I think that they all deserved sacking at half time because. Yeah, no, you could have. You, you, you can't. Mind, that is poor, really poor, Dom. And, and, and all this kind of. You, I mean, one thing, Eric, in fairness, he seems like a really top lad, a nice fella, but there's no point in making excuses after everyone's seen that. You know what I mean? If you can't yeah. put a chance away in a half like that, yeah, then, oh, you know no. what I mean? I totally know it was. It was shocking. It was shocking. Anyway. Anyway, on a lighter note, Anthony, what's been tickling you on your social media? Uh, do you know what? I should have been ready here. I'm not. Can I tell you a clip? Can I tell you a clip and we can yeah. get it? Ah, oh, damn! I only seen it as well. Only seen it yesterday. You, you're a big um, reality TV fan. Do you remember Housewives of Cheshire? <laughs> Do you remember Actually, what? I have seen, seen this clip. I've I have seen, seen this clip. I think the one you, is it the He's in a restaurant. It. What? Is it in a restaurant? Restaurant. Oh, but it's like it's like celebrity first dates, isn't it? I don't know. I, I had no idea because, right? It's believe it or not, stage, believe it or not, Anthony. Bread. What? Believe it or not, I I was less clued up than the fella in the restaurant. I have no idea who these people are. You didn't know who genuinely. she was either. Hey, you didn't know who she was either. Not, I would not have a clue. Well, Why would I know? What? And I don't want any love and slander. I mean, she might not. She might just come with someone. But I remember her being ringside for one or two of my fights, actually. I, I don't know who she is. I swear to God, I'm not joking. Well, well I'm going to tell you now, Dom. You should have knew. It was, uh, especially you from being that part of the world. <laughs> she was uh, a real housewife of Cheshire out of the cast there. Right. But is there any way of putting a link on it? It's hilarious. She's on a date with some guy and he says, oh, you know, where are you from, Cheshire? Oh, so, you know, what is it you do? And she just, she was like, 
Well, I, I think you know what I do. And he was, he was just clueless, wasn't he? He had no idea. She then yeah. said she was a stripper. He then said, oh, oh really? And then, ah, oh, no, it was gold. That one was absolutely gold. Yeah, no, I, I, I had... I'd love I to know. People, I, I am, I'm waiting for that episode because I, what I know if you see the date out, and I, I'm pretty sure... And, you know, if you got a second date or there was any kind of thingy then, what a man, what a man. But I reckon he might have struggled. Nah, I, I can't see too much happening there. Oh, it was brilliant. <laughs> right, well, there you go, Anne. So, uh, yeah, enjoy Belfast and Birmingham. Yeah, and, um, all being well, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do it again. So have fun. Absolutely. Thank you very much indeed for watching the Project Boxing Podcast.